Hi folks, in this video we're going to be looking at painting these lovely sacred ruins bases from Unreal Wargaming Studios and we're going to be doing it in a lovely sandstone colour without using an airbrush. I'll post a link in the description below on where you too can get these bases. So without any further ado, let's cue the music. The first step is to apply a base coat of English Uniform from Vallejo Model Color over this base. If you don't have English Uniform, then Steel Legion Drab from Games Workshop is a good alternative. I have given this base a coat of grey primer and I have washed this in warm soapy water before applying this primer as this is a resin kit. And I've thinned this down with a little bit of water on the palette enough that I'll be able to coat this base with a nice smooth even finish in about two to three thin coats. And we don't have to be particularly neat when we're covering this, we're just making sure that we're covering every single little bit of the base, getting into all the nooks and crannies and covering over that lovely detail. If we go on to the sides, don't worry too much, we are going to be coming in with a black paint later to neaten up the finish of this base and really allow that tan sandstone colour to pop. Once your couple of coats of English uniform have dried, your base should look something like this. The next step will be to add some shadows and some red tones into this sandstone base. And to do that, we're going to be using some Indian shadow from the scale 75. If you don't have Indian shadow, Tuscor fur from Games Workshop is a very similar color, but I do rather like the matte finish that the scale 75 paints give. With this colour, I have thinned this down a little bit thinner than you'd normally use to layer paint onto a miniature, but not quite so thin that the paint has formed a wash. With this, I'm focusing this paint into areas that I want to be shadowed. I'm going to be applying this mixture there, and then once I'm happy with its position, I'm going to rinse off my brush, and then while the brush is still wet, I will do a backwards and forwards motion and feather the colour out into the English uniform from the previous step. Now there isn't an exact science to this, it's more about getting a look that you're happy with. And this feathering blending technique doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to come back in with brighter and layering colours later on, which is going to hide any errors within the smoothness of our transition. What I'd suggest doing with this is doing one, maybe two passes of some pigment and going out into the feathering and seeing how you like the look. It's quite easy to build up the colour and if you think that you've gone too strong, don't worry, we can absolutely dial it back within the next stages. Areas that I'd look to focus on on things like this are smaller bits of rubbles, shadowed areas and creases on pillars, stones and rocks and things like that time lapse of me painting in this Indian shadow into the areas of the base that I wish to have this color transition so you can get a sort of idea of the areas that I want to have this color change. Again I cannot stress hard enough that don't get panicked over about the fade and the transition on this if it doesn't look exactly how you want it first time. This is exactly why we are working with a thin paint on this, applying a little bit putting it down onto the base, washing the brush off and using a wet brush to transition that colour out. You can be really heavy handed with this and get rid of most all of the paint from the previous step or you can just do a little bit. It's entirely up to you. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Just have fun and experiment with different effects. If you're doing lots of bases this is going to look fantastic if you've got colour variation. Once the shadow tone has dried, it should look something like this on your base. This allowed us to get some of the really nice reddy orange tones that you sometimes see in sandstone bricks. The next step that we're going to be doing with this base is to apply some dry brushing to start blending these two colours together. And for this, I'm going to be using Talan Sand from Games Workshop. With this dry brushing motion, I have got rid of most of the paint off of the dry brush onto a paper towel and I am doing small circular motions to build up the colour. As with all dry brushing, I would recommend slowly building up the colour in layers than trying to get a complete transition of colour in your first pass. 
And the reason that we're doing these circular motions is it keeps the dry brushing effect soft and tries to prevent any scratchy chalky lines from appearing in the transition of colour. And as you can see very quickly, it is really smoothing out that blend between the Indian shadow and the English uniform, getting a really nice sandstone colour. With this dry brush, as well as working on a transition between the two colours, we really want to start building up a colour on the flatter areas of this base. This is laying as a foundation for some lighter colours that we're going to come in with the next step and really allow the detail to pop. I'd also recommend doing a quick back and forth dry brush over every little bit of this, including the stones, the rocks and rubble. Next, we're going to be refining and brightening up this sandstone using Carrick Stone once again from Games Workshop. And just like in the previous step, I'm doing soft circular motions with barely any paint on the bristles, having got rid of most of it on a paper towel. Doing circular motions with a dry brush really does help when you've got big flat areas and you want to build up that transition of colour. And as you can see, it's really starting to brighten up and picking out all that lovely sculpted detail. You can do a bit of backward and forwards motion as well, and if you want to do some stippling where you stab the brush into certain areas, especially on things like pillars and flatter areas, if you want to develop a bit more of a texture into the rock surface. If you cover a smaller area each time you do a new soft pass of the Carrick Stone, you'll really notice that you'll start to get a lovely blending effect between all the different colours. For our last dry brushing layer, we're going to be using some Ushabti Bone from Games Workshop. And with this, I'm focusing on picking out the sharper details, such as the edge of the stairs, any divots or cracks from explosions or chips, and any of the sharper edges on the pillars and stones, things like that. And with this, we're really going to push for that very light tone. I'm also doing a very light backwards and forwards pass over everything just to add a final blending stage between all the different colours. The last stage of painting this base is to utilise weathering pigments to redefine and reinforce any of the orangey red tones from the earlier stages of this base tutorial. I have put a little bit of a medium rust coloured pigment onto my palette and added an awful lot of water and turned it into basically a wash consistency. And as you can see, I'm running this into the recessed areas and I can use a wet brush to wash away any of the pigments that I don't want in that place. This is really good for reinforcing shadows and doing pin washes into some of the crack detail. And if you're wondering why I've chosen to do this with pigments rather than using a wash, well, once the pigments have dried with this water mix, they leave a very matte finish behind and they go almost dusty and chalky. Not quite as if you'd apply them straight direct, but the idea of the water is it gives it that little bit of extra control and still has that nice chalky dusty finish. Like that, you get that film on top of sand dust and this is really going to help reinforce that. And this allows us to add some lovely warm tones back in if we've gone a little bright with our bone colours. I'm going to do a little time lapse here so you can see sort of the areas that I'm picking out with this. And you can do as much or as little as you want with this.
once you're happy with the level of pigment added, the sandstone section of this base is complete. All that's left to do is add the finishing touches. All that's left to do now is to apply an even coat of Vallejo model color black to the edge of the base. You don't have to use model color black, but I just really like its finish. I've chosen black as it's a nice neutral color that really allows the tans and khaki colors to really pop and show off your model on these really rather lovely bases. With the black trim now dry, this sacred ruin sandstone base is now complete. I really do like putting a black trim around the edge of bases as it allows neutral colours such as these reds, khakis and tans to really pop, allowing a lovely frame for your miniature. If you enjoyed this video, learned something or made it all the way to the end, why not consider subscribing? It's free of charge and it puts further videos just like this one in your YouTube feed. I hope that's given you some ideas on how to paint sandstone and allow you to frame some of your models in a new and different light and really help show them off on the table. Till next time folks.